Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Learning CAD Sketcher for Blender, where we're teaching beginners CAD Sketcher lessons using the CAD Sketcher add-on and basic modifiers within Blender. Today, we're going to be looking at creating this object and learning how to create a polar ray, which we can modify by changing the variables down here. So say the count, we can increase and decrease this. And we have to be careful if we go over because we just need to do some additional calculations in here for the rotation. So we've got 60 here, so 360 divided by nine. And we've got this back. So as you can see, we can edit that. This has been solidified and arrayed. And we're gonna be learning how to do that. It's a pretty simple workflow and we're going to make this object. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's see how we can create this. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. So I've opened up Blender, I've started a new project. I'm going to get rid of the center cube. Click on it, right click, and we'll go down to delete. Using the flyout bar on the right and coming down to Sketcher, we're gonna add a sketch. And we're gonna go upon this plane here, the XY plane. Click on that, and that's click on the Z and look at this from the top. We're going to be sketching a basic ring in here using the circle. Click on the circle, hover over the center point, click, that will become coincident, and bring the circle out. Let's add another one, click on the center, and bring the circle out. So when we create this as a mesh and solidify it, we'll just get a ring in here. I'm going to right click to get the mouse pointer back. And I'm going to select the inner ring. Go to tools on the sketcher and set some diameter. And we'll set this diameter. If we click on it, we'll set that size to 10 millimeters and hit enter. Click on the outer circle and bring it out a bit more. And let's set the diameter of this circle by clicking on it, set diameter. And you'll see that the diameter, this one here, will bring this around. It'll be laying on top of this one, but we need to bring this around so we can see it. We'll click on it and set the size to 15. And hit enter. These may be a bit small, we're working at a small size, but this is fine. Now we've got these two in here. Let's make sure that the convert type on the sketcher is set to mesh. And we'll leave the sketch. This becomes a mesh now. I'm gonna create another sketch. So we're gonna add another sketch. I'm gonna go upon the XY plane again. Let's zoom out. And this one is going to be circle in here. So I'm gonna place a circle in line with this point. So using the circle, place a circle in here. Right click to get the mouse pointer back and take this point and shift click this point and place a vertical constraint in there. That sets in diameter of this circle by clicking on it and set in diameter. And we'll set this to two millimeters and hit enter. So we're not worried about the actual sizing, how big this is, this is quite small. This is just for technique. So we have the two millimeter circle in here. Let's convert this to a mesh and leave the sketch. Now what we have are two sketches, one for the ring and one for what's going to be the hole. Let's double click on that and name this whole sketch. And we'll double click on the other sketch and name this ring sketch. Now we've got the two sketches, let's learn how to array this circle here. First of all, I need something to array this around. So I'm gonna use a circular array in here, a polar array. So I want to pivot around this point where this 3D pointer is. The 3D pointer is already set in the center. 
If we were doing this somewhere else, we'd click on the 3D pointer and then click over here. But we want this in the center. So I'm going to place this 3D cursor back in the center by coming down to the view. If we look down, we get 3D cursor and we need to zero these out. X zero, Y zero, and the Z as zero as well. So we zeroed all those out and it's back to the center. Come back to the sketcher and come up to add. And we're going to add an empty object and a plane axis. So this plane axis will be the rotation point of our array when we create an array of these the polar array. I'm going to come over to the right and click item. So this gives me the transform X, Y, and Z, rotation X, Y, and Z of what's been selected. Let's select one that we want to modify, this one here to create an array of, and click on the spanner or wrench icon, the modifier properties. Add a modifier. And what we want is the array. Now, when we add the array, this is going to be a linear array at first. We're going to modify that to be a circular array or a polar array. To do that, come over to the right. We're looking for the object offset. So this offsets the array from a selected object, which is going to be our empty plane axis. So make sure object offset is checked. Come in, it's going to ask for the object. We can click on there and click on the empty. So that's all set up now. If I rotate this empty by clicking on it, and we can see the rotations here. If I rotate, well, let's use the rotate tool from over here and click on Z. So we go directly down on this. If I start rotating this, we can see what's happening. But as you can see, the circle is moving in and out, which we don't want. That zero, that Z rotation off. And click off. So what's happening here is if we come back to the whole sketch, see this factor X is one. We need to zero this factor X. So let's set this to zero. What you'll see is that when we click off, and though there's a count of two, the spacing has been stacked. So we've got zero spacing here. This means when we start rotating this, it rotates in the correct trajectory around the circle. So you can see that's rotating around there now. That's zero off the Z axis. So they're stacked on top of each other. So that's think of how many of these I want. So I've got two at the moment. Let's go for five holes. I want five holes around this. So we've got the five holes, they're stacked. So we've got to adjust the empty and look at the rotation on the Z. So this Z here, we need to adjust this. So this has got to be the right value. So let's click in here and delete what's in here. Now we've got five items. So we do 360 degrees because this is a circle. 360 degrees in the circle divided by five. So we can do maths in here and hit enter. So now we have all these circles distributed around our ring here. Now it's time for the boolean. So I'm going to click off and bring this around this way. And we need to add modifiers. So I need to add a modifier to the ring sketch. Let's just use the standard pointer there. For the ring sketch, we need to add a modifier and we need to solidify that ring sketch. I'm going to go for a thickness of two millimeters. And the thickness, I want it going upwards. So we make sure that this is set to one. So we've got that in there. Let's pick the whole sketch now and do the same. You can see it's sitting on the bottom. So we've got the array modifier in here. Let's hide that. 
and add another modifier. Add a modifier, and we go for a solidify. Thickness, again, two millimeters. Offset, and we'll send this upwards. So rather than the minus one, we'll set that to one. And we've got those in there. Let's just shrink that modifier up. Now I'm going to add a Boolean modifier. So I can add this to either or. I'm going to add it to the ring sketch. And we'll add a modifier and create a Boolean. We get the object that we want to use. I'm going to use operand type of object and I'm going to select the object that I want. So let's click on that and we'll select the whole sketch. We can use the eyedropper if we want. Because we've used the whole sketch, it is still visible at the top. Let's hide that whole sketch. And what you'll see is that, well, it's removed it in there, but we've got some problems in here. So you can see that we haven't gone all the way through. We're on difference, which is correct. So that's increased the size of these holes. So click on the whole sketch. Let's show that. Come down to solidify, and we'll increase the thickness, this one here. Let's go for three millimeters. So that's coming out the top, and the offset, well, we can set this to 0 0.5. That means that we'll get some coming out the top and some at the bottom. Let's hide that whole sketch now, and we can see the holes have gone all the way through and we've completed our polar array. At any time we can come back into the array and change the count to say two or let's go for six and you can see the object has disappeared. If that happens, well, our calculation for the NT is wrong. So let's come up to the NT and change this to 360 divided by six and hit enter. So we've got that back now. So you can see we've now got the six holes going around our object. If these are looking not smooth enough, as you can see, it's not very smooth in there. We can come back to the ring sketch and that's coming to the sketcher. And the ring sketch was the first sketch. So let's edit that. So you can see that sketch is edited and we can increase the mesh curve resolution. So we can bring this up. Let's go for something like 20 and leave the sketch. And you can see we've got a much smoother surface there because we've increased that resolution. Notice the sketch, the name of the sketch has gone back to sketch. So that's double click the sketch in here and name this one ring sketch and hit enter. Now, when we edit that one, let's drop this down just to make an amendment and leave the ring sketch. It updates on the right hand side here. So just watch out for the name in between these two, because when we edit and leave the sketch, then this is going to get renamed. So where I renamed it here, you can see that was wrong. And I should have came over and renamed it in the sketcher itself. So this one should be whole sketch. Hit enter. And when we edit it and leave the whole sketch, we can see it updates in the tree view on the right hand side here. So I hope that's given you an idea of how to create the polar array or circular array in CAD Sketcher. And I hope to see you in the next lesson. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash mj3dstudio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.